What's going on YouTube? It is Bitcoin J again with another video. Today's video, today we are going over the we're we're doing market analysis, going over exact positions where we're looking for entries, uh, where we're looking to build our trade setups with entries, where we're looking to take profit, where we're looking to set our stops, and um, you know, where we're looking to short if it comes to that. So uh, we go over Bitcoin, we go over uh, what else? Ethereum. Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ripple, Chainlink, Tezos, Neo, Bitcoin Futures. We go over everything. Um, so check it out, guys. Enjoy. Make sure to answer the question of the day. Leave it in the comment. Follow, subscribe, like, love, everything. Peace. We are way zoomed in right now. This is the hourly chart. Let's zoom out to the daily. See how that changes. Let's zoom out to the monthly real quick. So if you guys know me, you know I like to do top down analysis. So I, I start from the monthly. Well, the monthly is kind of big. I just kind of like to get an idea of the monthly where it's at. Um, then I go to weekly and then I go, I, I go to smaller time frames. But look at this monthly candle, super red. Look at this rejection right here. This is last year. And then we're getting the, the similar rejection right here right now. So, I mean, we're still good. If we get a line, and we draw support, kind of gives us, gives us an idea if we continue on this ascending trend line gives us an idea that uh, if we were to drop this could be an area where we would have support so this is the eight thousand dollar range if we break if we broke down under this uh, ascending range though ascending support line then we could be looking at a drop down to this these levels right here not not the pandemic levels because this right here was because of the pandemic um but these right here this is the six thousand to seven thousand range let's uh go to the weeklies So right now this is the weekly. This is a weekly chart here. I can't zoom in no more. So the weekly. So when I when I say the weekly chart, that means that every single candle is one week's time. So this is what the price did in one week. Y'all understand? So every candle equals one week. So that's what we're looking at right now. And as you can see here, if this is where we took off in July, and then this is where we got stuck in August. So we got, which was is a top of the Fibonacci, which is 12,500. So this is a, a Fibonacci tool that I use. If you look a little, a little bit back, You see that we took off here we kind of got stuck here for a little bit and then we took off again and now we're being rejected so last time we didn't have a rejection this big as big as this the one we currently having right now um, the reason that we're having such a big rejection here the 12,000 level is a very very strong level 
um, because we were rejected last year at the same level. So you see 12,000 right here last year. Look at last year, uh, J June, July, July. We got rejected down and then we came back up in August. We got rejected again in August and then that's when we when we shot all the way back down um, until about November. In November, we kind of just consolidated. Uh, we started the new year off uh, trending up until Corona virus hit. And then that's when we have this huge red candles. This is when everything was going down. So that's just what causes this is fear and uncertainty. So when people have fear and uncertainty, then uh, they go to cash. And that's why prices on everything goes down. Because the whole stock market was down from, doesn't matter where you were, the, the, the market was down. Um, everything went, went down. Because when there's a crisis, people go to cash instead of, um, instead instead of what do you call it of being in invested in stuff so um so yeah so currently we're in this uh we got rejected we topped that at 12,500 we went as low as what was the low here uh 98.17 98.11 so 98.11 is the low from this drop here if we zoom in a bit to the daily so now we're at the date we're looking at the daily chart so you know how the last one was a weekly chart meaning that each candle was equal to one week now the daily chart every single candle represents one day so it gives us a breakdown of what's happened every single day. Green means up, red means down. Um, so you can see here, we have just been consolidating here after this big drop. <clears throat> and you can see the two levels that, that are marked here. Both these levels right here. This is where we've been consolidating and ranging. Now we have the last few days, we, we did range up a bit. Um, and it's also the wicks have gotten a little bit smaller. We did try to break back out here on, when was this, yesterday? The third, the 13th, yeah, yesterday. We tried to break out a bit, um, but we got rejected back down. So we're still being re rejected by this Fibonacci level, which is uh, the 0.618 level. You see how we keep getting rejected on this line every single day. So that's a very strong level there. Um, we basically need to break out of here to get to this next level. Then we have to. Then we'll have this level right here, which is a 0.5. Then we can go up to the next one and so forth. So all of these are going to be barriers on our way back up. Um, and then the bottom is going to be support. So if you look at the pattern itself, the pattern is a bear flag. Now what a bear flag means, it's um, basically when there's a big drop in the market and the asset or whatever it is that you're looking at, um, whatever currency you're looking at, when there's a big drop and then consolidation happens after. So big drop, consolidation, and then usually the, the so if you're going to play the probabilities, the probabilities after a big drop and consolidation is a continuation of this big drop so it's usually the way it plays out usually is is a big move consolidation big move so if you look down here if we look at what happened back here we had look at these big move then we had consolidation and then big move up again and then you could even zoom in further in and you'll see those same things happening over and over and over because these moves were up it can because the big move was up then the consolidation happened then the continuation of the big move right here so big impulse move consolidation big impulse move consolidation and then it broke down so 
that shows you that just because it's it's this pattern this was see this one right here was a bull flag so the probability was that it was going to consolidate and then it was going to continue up but we didn't we because we met a big resistance level which is a 12,000 mark and we didn't have enough buying um we didn't have enough buyers to get through it so we got pushed back down and and now we had a big move down now we're consolidating here so if we continue consolidating here and we continue this pattern then uh we would break through here and we would uh probably break down into to this area here see where all this consolidation happened we would break uh back down to that area so if we broke down under this level right here which is going to this is going to be the next support which is around 92 to between 9000 to 9200 um so that's the next point of consolidation that's our next supports if we break down through these levels now if we break up then we're looking at like i told you guys each one of these zones here are going to be a resistance and then the major major one is the 12000 number that's going to be the biggest one so that is um if you're holding Bitcoin uh, and it goes back up to 12,000, I recommend selling as close to 12,000 as possible and then uh, setting buy orders above 12,000. So, um, and I would set buy orders above this high actually. So above 12,500, above 12,508 probably. Um, so you could sell at 12,000 because if we get rejected again, then you could buy at a lower price like right now right now you could buy at ten thousand if you would have sold at twelve that's a two thousand dollars two thousand dollars you would have saved um so if you if you buy again then it goes back up now you're making more money you know what i mean but that that goes more into trading and you have to have more of an understanding of what you're doing if you're doing that if you don't have too much of, un of an understanding on trading then i just recommend leaving the money in for long term purposes and just not going in and out of trades if you want to learn how to trade and you want to practice then practice with a small amount leave the majority of your money in Bitcoin and just take about like 5% of your total capital and practice day trading with that you guys you don't want to use all your capital because then um, more times than not you end up losing money <clears throat> uh so yeah so that's pretty much what what we're looking at here uh if we zoom in to the four hour chart we just kind of see the same thing so now a four hour chart means every candle represents a four hour time period let's continue this let's switch back to the daily charts so this is a daily what's happening here we talked about um, the pattern we talked about what we're seeing in the long the long term and the shorter term uh, the supports and resistance um, now if I'm looking for an entry if I'm looking for an entry or I'm, if I'm looking for a day trade here I'm looking to enter you see you see down here this support right here so this is the 9800 zone you see how they touched right here so these are the entries that you want to take if you want to go long like if you want to if you're predicting the price to go up or if you're trading the range so if you're trying to trade this range right here what's what's been going on then up here you want to sell and down here you want to buy um, another way to play it is breakout so you want to if it breaks out then you can buy like I say it breaks out of this range then you you enter along and and then the idea is that it hits this up here which is 10,800 um, now what happens sometimes when you're playing breakout so that you have to be prepared for is that you have fake outs see these all here Boom, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are all fake outs. It like pretended like it was gonna break out. It started breaking out and then it, it just dropped again. 
like it got rejected instantly um, so you, that's why you always have to have a plan you have to you have to know where you're gonna exit if you do enter the trade so you minimize your losses so um, a trade that I took this weekend I entered on a break of 10,500 on Saturday I believe it was what day is today today's Sunday so Saturday night probably Saturday in the afternoon I don't know sometimes Saturday um, and it broke out and you see how it went up to 10,583 but then it dropped it got rejected so I exited the trade I didn't take this loss right here and now it's currently at 10,300 um, so if I'm looking to enter I the sweet spot is down here the second best support to enter at is gonna be these the end of these candles um, the reason this is a support right here is because of the number 10,000 10,000 is a whole number remember when it comes to whole numbers we've talked about this I talk about this all the time it's it's a psychological support people like whole numbers they just like to buy at whole numbers or sell at whole numbers it's, a, it's psychological it's, a, it's part of the humans in trading um, so 10,000 is the next the second best support entry um, and then after that 10,200 is the next best support entry so if you're looking for a support entry is down here the 9800 9, zone 10,000 zone and 10,200 um, now the higher up you go in this you, you know how it's going up and down the higher up you take a trade the riskier it is and the more likely you are to get stopped out so that's why you have to be careful if you're taking trades up here um, now if you're looking for a breakout I like the trade above 10,500 I would I I'm entering trades above 10,500 even though there is a fake out uh, I'm still taking it again I'm taking the, the trade above and then I'm keeping a stop loss under 10,500 so if it fakes out and it goes back under then I'm stopping out um, and I'm fine with taking like putting like a $50 to $100 stop loss and uh, my f my targets are basically gonna be 10,600 10,000 800 or you could do 10,600 700 800 uh, those could be your three targets because up here is going to be resistance um, so you want to be taking most of your profits here and you want to be if it does break above 10,800 you want to do another breakout entry up there and so you re-enter above the resistance so the idea is to sell at or before this resistance and then buy again enter a brand new breakout trade above the resistance all right so ethereum looking at ethereum we have basically a very similar pattern here so remember the the um, bear flag pattern I told you guys about with Bitcoin we have the same pattern with ethereum so it's a bear flag and then consolidating now it has been trending up a little bit more and it's actually kind of been riding this moving average it did drop below it here which was today today I think it's down 5% there's a 50-day moving average on the daily um, and then this is a 20-day moving average here 20 day So it looks like we ran into the 20 day moving average. Um, we ran into a previous support resistance zone here, which is around the th 380 mark. So it looks like 380. If you guys look at that mark, let me see 380. So you guys can see here, 380 gave it issues here like it took some consolidating here before it broke out above that 380 mark to 400 which was another resistance remember whole numbers so look how each candle represents one full day so look how many times we got we just consolidated in between uh, three what is this this one's 400 to 380 so 380 here was support 
remember support resistance turns into support once it breaks above it um and then we finally broke out when we broke out we went all the way to what 440 yep so we hit 440 then we got 440 was a resistance we came back down to 400 which is the well actually we came back down to 380 look at look at this right here we dropped straight down to 380 the support where it's at right now and then we took back off to what was it for 488 was the high so we almost made it to 500 which was our target uh, in our trade group because we entered the trade above we, we entered a few trades here um, but then we got rejected all the way back down now we're back at this 380 zone so this 380 area uh, it's definitely a good area to enter a breakout trade so I'm looking to enter let me see what is the high here 388 so I'm looking to enter above 380 and my first target is 390 second target 400 Remember, 400 is also resistance so we'll, we'll probably bounce around at 400 and I'll have another entry set above 400 Um, so that's how I would play it for the long if I'm looking to, to go long if I'm looking to go short then uh, you're gonna be using 380 the 380 is resistance uh, to enter so you'll, you'll want to enter around as close to 380 as possible to short it uh, or w let it go above 380 and then wait for it to go down if it, and if it gets rejected back down under 380 then you enter a short here um, yeah it's about it I think as far as a short um, I guess the only other way I'd enter a short I do a breakout short around 350 so under 350 I'd enter a short and then the targets are gonna be 330 330 310 300 are the three targets there if you're entering a short um, so it, it all depends what happens here it depends more what happens with Bitcoin so if this if the flag the bear flag does play out and it just continues and then drops you know continues down then that's a that's a short you can enter because if we break down and if we break under 300 we could see these levels are over here again this is a support so this is 250 so we could definitely touch 250 again if we break under 300 So that's uh, those are the plays I'd be doing in Ethereum. Just depends which way you want to play it. <clears throat> but the three, remember the 380 price range is the main thing you want to look at, and you want to use that number to figure out your entry. And the, the next number you want to use to figure out your entry is 350. So 380 and 350 are the two numbers you want to build, basically build your entries around. Let's uh, take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, kind of the same thing. We have the the big drops and consolidation, and it this has like very very little movement here. So it's been consolidating, and it's gotten pretty tight. So I'm kind of playing this the same way. I'll I'll, I'll be playing all of these the same way. 
the breakout here is 230 the support is 220 so for this range for this small little range that it's plain um, so you'll be using 220 you want to enter as close to 220 as possible uh, for a long entry or you want to use that 220 if it breaks under that 220 zone if it breaks under this low to start to look to enter a short um, the support is 200 the support is going to be 200 here um, and if you're going up if you're entering at 220 your targets are 230 is the first one uh, I would also take some profits at 235 and then profits at 240 Yeah, because 240 to 250 is going to be a uh, resistance. See it right here. So it'll have to break through there. Remember, when you guys are looking for targets and entries and support resistance, always look back on its history, what it's done before at the same price levels, because it always reacts the same. Not always, but. Um, for the most part it's likely to react the same because a lot of people are watching these same levels so a lot of people are like you know they see this they're like hmm last time it was here at 220 look what happened it took off so you know maybe it's gonna do it again so people are gonna buy here at 220 and if enough people buy then this is what could happen just an idea so you have to be ready regardless of in which direction it goes. Let's look at Litecoin. Litecoin a little bit more of the same. We have basically this is called the BART pattern. I don't know if you guys ever heard the, of the BART pattern. You can kind of see it in all of these. See, see how this right here, like if you just look at this outline, it looks like Bart, Bart Simpson's head. Like this is his head, his hair, you know, how he has spiky hair. And then this is the back of his head. <laughs> so it's called the Bart pattern. It actually happens a lot in, in crypto. If you look at all everything right now, all the everything's gonna have the Bart pattern right now. Bart pattern. Who's heard of the Bart pattern before? You guys ever heard of it? Bart pattern trading named for its resemblance to the cartoon characters hairstyle the pattern traces an upward swing some uneven or spiky sideways trading followed by a swift drop so if you look at images <laughs> look at look at this <laughs> see Bart Simpson You'll see, you'll see it a lot in trading. So you'll see it a lot. That's called the BART pattern. All right, so, uh, so let's continue. Uh, so we saw Litecoin, Litecoin, same thing guys. Uh, for entry, let's see. So if I'm looking at enter Litecoin, the levels that I'm looking at is fifty dollars, the very obvious one, fifty-two. So it looks like fifty to fifty-two. It's a resistance zone here, right? And then the bottom, we're looking at forty-five to forty-six. 
So 45 to 46 range. So we're at 47 right now. We're not far from this bottom of the range right now. Um, if I'm looking for a trade to enter in Litecoin. I'm probably looking to enter above. Uh, let me see. Probably looking to enter above fifty-two dollars uh, to go long. So that's a long entry breakout. This is called a breakout trade. Uh, above fifty-two, I would enter a long. Targets would be fifty-five, fifty-six. Well, the fifty-five. Um, probably sixty. Yeah, 55, 60, and, uh, and 64. 55, 60, and 64. So, <clears throat> so if you have a $5 reward, that means that you want to take about your risk. You're going to want to have it up under uh, about a $2 risk. You take about two dollar risk, so have your entry like under fifty dollars. If it breaks down under fifty, then you want to get out. <clears throat> and um, if you're looking to enter on support, it's just I don't really like the support, but the support would be around here forty six dollars. The forty five to forty six dollars is support. So you'll be looking to enter here. Um, and your first your first uh, profit would be $50. So that's $5. So if you enter around 46, let's say you enter at 46, you would set your stop below $45. It gives you $1 stop. It gives you $4 uh, reward. So you're risking $1 to make $4. That's a 4 to 1 risk risk reward ratio. It's a good trade to take. Um, and if you're looking at the short side, you want to be shorting under $45. So if it breaks $45, if it goes under it, you're going to short it. Um, you're going to be looking to take profit at $42, at $40, um, at $40, and it looks like at $38. So, you're basically, if you're entering on the $45, your first profit is $42. So you're, I, I don't like, I don't really like it. I mean, you can, let's say you enter at 44.75. So you have $2.75 reward and you've set a stop above 45. So you can set a, a stop like 50 cent stop or something like that. So, I mean, it, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, you can take that. That gives you the right odds to play it. the right uh, risk reward odds <coughs> you always want to make sure that that the plan makes sense um, where you're entering and where you're stopping out and where you're taking profit you want to make sure your risk reward always makes sense um, so if your risk reward is four to one for example like so if you if you're risking one dollar to make four dollars then that means even if you lose um you know three out of four trades you're still breaking even so you only need to be 25 per, you, need, you only need to be right 25 percent at a time just to break even You know what I mean? And the same thing if your if your odds are three to one, um, you only need to be right 33% of the time to break even. 
So as long as you're you're able to be right half the time, you should be profitable. That's why you always use proper risk reward. XRP. Let me zoom out of XRP real quick. See what's been going on here. Not too much. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, XRP. Kind of the same thing. Let's zoom back in to the daily chart. We're looking at the same pattern. The impulse move down. Consolidation. As we wait for its next move, as it decides in which direction which direction it wants to go. So we're we're hoping that it bounces back up. But uh, remember, all of these are right now are correlated with Bitcoin. So these patterns are the same exact pattern as Bitcoin. So if you're looking for a trade on Ripple, wait, uh, this is the wrong one. Sorry, <laughs> that was Litecoin. If you're looking for a trade on Ripple, you see, and you can see here another uh, BART pattern. So Ripple, if you're looking to short, the entry is on a break of 23 cents. If you're looking to enter, the entry is around 20. 24 23 and a half to 24 cents now nah, I wouldn't even enter at 24 cents uh, 23 and a half to 24 cents is your entry or from 23 cents to 24 cents really because um, if you enter at 24 your stop still has to be below 23 um, and then you're looking at 25 cents as your first target so the closer you can enter the 23 cents the better um, if you're looking for a breakout then above 25 cents you can enter and sell below 25 cents so if it goes above you enter the trade if it drops back below you want to you want to close your trade and try it again because taking small losses doesn't matter guys don't let the small lo small losses phase you or make you make you emotional about your trade. Keep taking a trade. Link, chain link. Uh, chain link we spoke about several times as well. Uh, remember I told you guys not to buy up here. I don't know if you guys saw that video or were here during that live stream, but I told you guys do not buy when it was up here um, and this is why it's gone all the way down so now we're back to levels where we can enter um, ideally you want to you want to enter at ten dollars so it did it reach that ten dollar mark um, if you guys saw one of my previous videos I had called that that mark out um, if you're looking to go to enter up, you want to basically enter above $13, but look at all these fake outs. So maybe a little bit above 13, above 1350 is where I would look for a breakout entry. Uh, if you're looking to short, then $13 is where you want to short uh, and have a stop above 1350. Um, or you could do a breakout short. It would have to be around $10 below ten dollars if it goes under ten dollars you can short it you got to your first sell it's gonna be around here at 925 first target your first take profit target um but I don't I don't know many people selling chain link like shorting it but just in case anyone does want to look at Tezos Tezos a lot more the same just been trending down it is now at a support here the 
the support, it looks like 240 ish. Let me see. 220 to 240 looks like a support. And then 250, where's 250 at? Yeah, so around 240 to 250 is a support. So you can enter here using the this low here as a stop. So under 230, you'll have a, you'll have a stop loss. Well, actually, you probably, you see these levels right here, they went all the way down to 220. So if you're entering Tezels for any reason, your stop has to be below 220, which is these lows over here. So if you're entering at 250, you want to basically a 30 cent stop. Um, your target is 280 is your first target. You're entering 250, so that thir that's also 30 cents. So that's a one to one risk reward. So not really, I wouldn't enter at 250. I would try maybe 240, 240, then you're risking 20 cents for 40 cents. That gives you a two to one risk reward ratio. So that's a trade that I'd uh, be interested in taking. I wouldn't enter at 250 though. And you could do a breakout trade also above. Mm, you would have to enter above 280 for breakout and have a stop below 280. Your first target three dollars. Let's look at Neo. Neo. Neo's been going up, man. Any of you guys uh, trade Neo? Neo Neo is actually back up to the point to the high where it dropped from. So Neo is, a, is, a, is an interesting coin right now. Um, <clears throat> Twenty cents is actual a support where you can enter. For Neo, with your stop, your stop's gonna be about about twenty five, uh, seventy five cents. Actually, your stop, you might as well just give it a whole dollar. Um, your first target is twenty two, so that'll give you a, a two to one risk reward. Uh, second target twenty three. So it's not a bad it's not a bad trade to take it's only a two to one but it's it's actually looking pretty solid because a pattern from where it dropped it's recovered already so it's pretty strong I like this trade I might consider taking taking this neo trade in our VIP group um, look at Bitcoin futures. So, I don't know if you guys watched my YouTube video, I talked about this uh, gap right here. See how there's a gap here? Let me see, 11, 14. So, they already opened again uh, for this week. So, see how there's no gap here? Well, here, between the 24th and 27th, there's a gap because the price went up so a lot of times what happens in trading gaps get need to get filled before it, we can continue up so a lot of people technical analysts are saying that the reason the price is currently going back down is because we need to fill this gap so the gap is at 9600 so that's one level that we have to pay attention to because we could fill that gap that might be the reason why we're currently dropping and maybe once we touch this gap once we fill it we might bounce back up so just something for you guys to keep in mind and anyone else who's been in here lurking like TV time I appreciate you guys it is very well appreciated that you decide to spend your evening with me or your morning wherever you are in the world not sure where you guys are um, 
but where I am, it is 1.40 a.m. right now, and I've been up since like 9 o'clock, so I'm pretty tired, and I gotta be up in, I gotta be up in 6 hours, or less, what time is it, yeah, I gotta be up in 6 hours, guys, to trade the stock market, so, peace and love, guys, see you on the next, what's up, guys, it is time for the question of the Alright guys, as you guys know, question of the day, every video we will have a random question about something in the video. The question will always be in a random area of the video like it is now. Um, find the question and find the answer in the video. Post your comment. You post your answer in the comments for a chance to win a free month's membership to our trading room. Uh, winners will be picked randomly once the video receives over 30 likes guys that number changes as we grow so good luck here, here we go guys you ready question of the day is what is your favorite setup for a trade entry from today's market analysis um, so go ahead and drop a comment with your answer to that question and that is pretty much it guys thanks